Hello, Art1200 InDesign Software. My name is Jessica Kern. I will be your instructor this summer. Uh, this video is to welcome you to the summer 2022 semester. I am going to walk through everything you need to know in order to get started and be successful in the first week of the semester. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance because it's probably going to be about a 30 minute video. But I promise you, if you watch the entire video, it will cut the time that you need to spend on the orientation in half, if not more. So you can decide if you would rather read to learn about what you should do for to get started or watch the video. And either option is okay, just pick the one that you like. In this video, we will go through everything you need to know to get started. So first and foremost, in order to get to our class, you're going to go to slcc.instructure.com and you'll log in using your My SLCC username and password. When you log in, it will dump you into what's called the dashboard, which is what you see here. And you want to look for the course that says InDesign Software. Yours might not be pink. I colored mine pink. And it might say Art 1200 502. Um, I've renamed it InDesign for Summer. Go ahead and click on that, and it will dump you into the course homepage. The course homepage is how you can navigate for the entire course if you want to. The top section outlines kind of how to get started, what I'm talking about right now, and then also has some key information. So we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. My strength is that I'm incredibly thorough. I will grade your work really fast. I will be available um, quite a few hours every week for online office hours and for live sessions together. My weakness is email, specifically Canvas inbox email. The way that Canvas processes and sets up their email, it just, it doesn't work with me. And I always miss emails and I always am behind on responding to my emails. So what I would like to ask from you is that you make every attempt that you can to visit me either during office hours or outside of office hours via the chat tab in our course or to attend my weekly review session each week to ask all of your questions. Please only use the Canvas inbox if there's something that's super private um, that you need to ask me or clarify. Um, well, for many reasons, I would like you to use the chat, but mostly because I'm really bad at email. Um, but also, if you, if you have a question, let's say that we are learning how to use images in InDesign and you're confused about the difference between a container and uh, the frame inside a container. If you have that same question, if you have that question, someone else might have that same question. So if you were to post it via the chat, there's a running log of that. So if someone else logs in that same week and has the same question, they might get the answer right away and not have to wait for me to respond. I'll talk more about office hours and my weekly live session later in this video. With that being said, make sure that you read through the top portion of the homepage so that you understand that. I'm going to skip over and scroll down. We have four learning units this semester. Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, Unit 4. Your grades are linked to the units. So each unit is worth a certain percentage of your grade. Unit 1 and Unit 2 are both, I believe, worth 25% of your grade. Unit 3 is 35% because Unit 3 is like the most important unit of a semester. And then unit four, I believe, is worth 15% of your grade. We'll confirm that when we go to the syllabus. The homepage is a visual calendar, so you can use this calendar to figure out when you should be working on certain things. We have 12 modules in our course. So getting started in InDesign is a module. Creating your first InDesign project is a module. So we have 12 modules in 12 weeks. So essentially, we're going to do one module per week. However, in addition to those 12 modules, we have an orientation module. So the orientation module and module one are all due during week one of the semester. And then if you look, you have one module due every week between week one and week 12. All coursework is always due on Saturday at 11.59 p.m. of each week. Our week will be scheduled as follows. Mondays, I will have online office hours, Mondays and Thursdays. I'll have online office hours from 5 to 6 p.m. via the chat. You can pop in there and chat with me in real time, or you can post questions anytime before 5. And then at 5 o'clock, I'll log in, I'll answer all of your questions. And so you can pop back in later that night or the next morning to see the answers. In addition to that, uh, this course for transparency is a pilot semester of a newly, a new 
updated version of the InDesign course. So the guts of the course are the same course we've been teaching for the last 10 years, but we have updated it. We've added some, some new lessons on digital technology and gotten rid of some older lessons. Um, because of that, I am going to, in addition to the learning resources that are embedded into the course, I want to make sure that everything that you need to be successful is presented directly to you. Uh, so every Monday, I will also post a recorded lecture recorded every single week for that that week. And I'll talk more about that when we get to look at a module. Um, the way the course is set up is that there's an embedded reading assignment or textbook inside the course. Um, but because it's the pilot semester, I'm not 100% confident that those lessons are going to be thorough enough to my liking. So you will have the option to read the lesson or you can watch my video. And if you really want to, you can do both. But <coughs> excuse me, I've been sick. Sorry about that. Um, that will be up to you. The due dates are posted. Uh, my late work policy is that I expect all of your work to be in on time, but I understand it's a summer. I understand it's an online class and things happen. So my late work policy is that I accept late work, but late work is docked 10% for being late no matter how late it is. And I only accept late work essentially while we're still working on a unit. You'll see that the last item uh, or the last module for unit one is due on Saturday, June 4th. You have one week from that day to submit any late work for that unit. So the last day to submit any late work for unit one is going to be Saturday, June 11th. Same thing applies for unit two. A week after June 25th, which is July 2nd, is the last day to submit any late work for unit two. Everything in the unit locks at that point. So make sure you get it turned in. The only exception to this rule will be unit four. So we finish our last unit um, essentially the day after the semester ends. So the semester, for whatever reason, is ending on a Friday this year, but I want your due dates to be Saturdays. So the last due date for our course is going to be Saturday, August 6th, but because the semester's over, I can't accept late work. So there's no late work in um, unit four. There's also um, a caveat to this, the only assignments that you cannot submit late are the final exams. And I don't want to talk too much about them because they're not that important, but there's two. When, when we get there, there's a 50 question quiz and there's a hands-on InDesign activity. So there's like final exam part one and final exam part two. They are the only two assignments that cannot be submitted late this semester. Okay. Well, I guess technically that means that the portfolio prep can't either because it's due on the last day of the semester. When you navigate the course, you can either click the links that are on the home page and it will redirect you to the modules page, or you can just click modules directly. And then you can scroll up and down until you find the module that you're working on. We will work on the modules from the order they're posted on the modules page, from the top module all the way to the bottom. And we will do the content inside the modules from the top of the module to the bottom. If you jump around in a module, it's just gonna make your life harder. So just go in the order it's posted. Before I forget, I want to show you one little little uh, caveat to our, our game plan. Everything that you're going to work on this semester is posted on Canvas. So there's the orientation module, there's module one, which is getting started in InDesign, and there's one on uh, creating your first InDesign project. But you'll notice that everything after the orientation is grayed out. That's because in order to unlock the course, you must thoroughly complete the orientation module. Essentially what you want is green check marks down the right hand side here of all of the required reading. So you have to read all these pages and then you need to submit all these activities. And once you do all of those things, you'll have green check marks that go all the way down the bottom, all the, all the way down the side of the module. And once you do that, it unlocks the entire course. It's not like it unlocks module one. And then if you finish module one, it unlocks module two, just do the orientation and it will unlock the entire course. Okay, let's leave student view. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna go back to the home, home page. Um, the home page also asks you to read the syllabus. Before we go there though, um, the first thing I would like all students to do every single time they log into any one of my courses, whether you take this class or Photoshop or printing or math or visual arts for me, I want you to get in the habit of the first thing that you should always do is go to the announcements tab and read any new announcements that have been posted. Um, you can see I have nine announcements that I've pre-typed up for your semester. So like the first week of the semester, you're gonna get like nine announcements. I promise you will not get nine every single week. Um, but 
uh, it's important that you read them. If I have something that the entire class needs to know, or I want you to be able to quickly reference information, I will send it out as a course announcement. I number my course announcements so that you can know, like, if you've read six, when you come back, you can read seven, eight, and nine. Um, for the first week, the two most important, important uh, announcements are announcement number two has questions that you should pay attention to as you work your way through this video and or the orientation. These are the quiz questions that you will take at the end of the orientation. So I'm giving them to you now. I know the orientation and the syllabus are huge and there's a lot of information on them. I don't expect you to memorize everything in them, but what I would like you to do, well, I'd like you to do two things. One, I want you to focus on what's important to you as you work your way through the orientation and the syllabus. And then also I want you to answer those 11 questions. Those are the questions that you are going to see when you take that quiz. And then the second announcement that's super important is I need to make sure everyone 100% knows you do not need to purchase Adobe Creative Cloud or InDesign. You will use InDesign, Photoshop, and maybe a little Illustrator for this class, but all the software is free and it's available through your BrewML email account. There's a link on here to a knowledge article presented by the college. You can read through it. You can skip it and just go directly to adobe.com. When you go to log in, put your entire brew email email address and it will redirect. It will know that we have like a corporate enterprise account and it will say to you, are you trying to log in as a person, as your personal account or do you want to log in under your school account? And you'll say school, please. And then follow the instructions. Okay, let's go back to the home page. Once you've read the announcements, um, you can get started with your coursework. Before we get started with the orientation, there's, I think, three more things that I want to talk about. First is when I have my, um, so this is a 100% asynchronous online course, which means you can do the coursework at your own pace, at your own time, as long as you hit the due dates that are posted. And you do not have to come to class in real time. You do not have to come to campus for any reason. With that being said, I'm going to host um, online office hours every Monday and Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m., via the chat tab. And what I would like is for you to visit me in real time if you need help. If you need help and we need to share InDesign, we can launch a Zoom together and we can kind of use that time uh, for, for help if you need help. In addition to that, I will host a weekly review session every Thursday starting at 6 p.m. via the Zoom tab. The weekly review will make more sense when we review an example module. But essentially, when you do your coursework each week, built into the module is a page that says weekly review. I want you to try to do all the coursework up in, in the module up until you get to that point. And then I would like you to attend the weekly review on Thursdays. And then you can finish the back half of the module after the weekly review. If you cannot attend in real time, you can watch the recording afterwards. So for ART 1200, you are required to attend the weekly review, whether you attend in real time or you watch the recording afterwards, but it's important. Basically what will happen is on Mondays, I'm gonna post a lecture video. Uh, and on Thursdays, I'm gonna review any questions you have and I'm going to specifically demo the projects each week. So if you don't do any coursework up until Thursday and I start demoing the project, and you don't know any of the InDesign skills that we covered, I will not have time to go back and teach every single InDesign skill. So you have to give all the skills-based things a try first and then come on Thursday with specific questions that you have about those skills. Okay, um, and then we should read the syllabus. So before we jump into the modules, let's jump to the syllabus. I'm gonna open it in a new tab. I'm not going to read it to you because I believe that you are a college student and you have the ability to read. Um, again, read through it but pay attention to the things that are of most interest or important to you you're taking this class for a reason so there so whatever reason you have for for caring about certain information over others is important uh, what i would hope that you would get out of this is that if you have questions or you need to reference anything you know that you can always come back to the syllabus and the orientation to find those answers later in the semester with that being said, let's review a couple of things that I think are important. First, my contact information is the same as it's on the, the home page. Um, the visual art and design department has Adobe tutoring if you need it. It changes from semester to semester though, so you need to call 801-957-3042. 
uh, and ask the department office what the open computer lab and the tutoring times are. Those are two different answers. So if you want to use the computer labs, you need to know the computer lab hours. If you want to use the tutoring, you need the tutoring hours. Um, so I guess anytime the lab is open, whether it's open just for the open lab or for the tutoring, you can go in and use the computers. But if you need specific Adobe tutoring, it's only some of those hours. So the lab might be open 7 a.m. until 7 p.m., but the tutoring might only be 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's two different people that work in the lab. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to come back to the course outcomes and objectives in a minute. So I've already said this, but this is a completely online course. You do not have to come to campus for any reason. Um, you can, though, if you want to. You can use any computer at any SLCC campus to access the Adobe software you need for this course. You will access it through something called S, uh, SLCC All Access. Um, my experience with All Access has not been great, though, so I don't recommend it uh, unless it's really your only option. If you don't want to or don't have the ability to download the software on your own computer, what I recommend is if you can get to the South City campus, the Visual Art and Design has a computer lab that already has the software installed and you don't have to go through SLCC All Access. You just hop on the computer and the Adobe software is there and there's Macs and there's PCs. Um, so if you're a Mac person or a PC person, you have access to what you need. Currently that lab is in room 1-180. At some point, I don't know when, either this summer or in the fall, it's going to move to room 1-051. So if you come to campus to use the lab and you show up and it's under construction, um, check out room 1-051. That's probably where it has moved to. Don't just show up, though. Call the department office at 801-957-3042 to ask what those hours are before you come to campus. Okay, this is an OER course, Open Educational Resources. We have embedded um, the draft version of a textbook that we've created for you in the course. You do not need to buy a textbook for this course. Um, you don't need to really buy any supplies. Um, you get access to InDesign for free. You will need InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop if you want to go ahead and download those. Um, throughout the course, you'll be required to print your projects. You have options to create electronic or physical prints and it's up to you. If you choose to print your projects, it shouldn't cost more than $15 for the entire semester. And then something I did not put on here is every once in a while students will ask, well, I know there's no textbook required, but do you recommend a textbook? And honestly, um, I like what's called the visual quick start guides. <coughs> okay, so this these visual quick start guys, these ones with the red, I like the way that they are presented. I like the way that it, it explains things. Um, the only problem is that they don't really update them very often, like this Photoshop one is from 2015. However, the InDesign one, if you can find the most updated InDesign one, InDesign has not changed as rapidly as Photoshop has, and most of the stuff that has changed has been um, for like digital and app development in InDesign. So the foundation of our course has not really changed. So if you really wanted to buy a book, you could get the InDesign Visual Quick Start Guide. And I would say 90 to 95% of what we do will sync up to it. So this is 2013. See if you can find the most recent version. I think it might even be this 2014 version. Um, it's still somewhat applicable, and if you go and find it in a store, you can usually find it like super cheap for like five bucks. Um, if you want to get something different, you can do the Adobe Classroom in a book in design. These are updated more frequently because Adobe creates them. They're, they'll be more expensive. Um, they're more project-based than knowledge-based. The reason I like the Quick Start Guide is because if you're doing like, let's say, tables there's like a whole chapter on tables and it explains what they are whereas in the classroom in a book it's going to be let's create a table together and it and it will go through the steps to create a table but it doesn't really set you up to be able to create your own table in the future if that makes sense um <clears throat> what i what i honestly recommend is that you go to adobe.com when you so you can go on youtube but you don't know if the person presenting the content on youtube is presenting it to industry standards. So you always need to kind of 
have an asterisk with that. But if you go to adobe.com and you hit creativity and design, and then you choose, we'll have to hit this to see InDesign. You choose the software that you're learning. So we can do, did I go past it? Where's InDesign? Oh, here we go. You do InDesign. When you get on the InDesign page, there's a learn and support button. Click on that. I guess we'll have to hit home. <coughs> and then I skip all of this and I just type in, like if you wanted to learn about tables, type in tables. It will redirect you to a search queue. Make sure you have InDesign selected over here and then change the search to learn. And it will have tutorials and videos and things like that. And the best part is that when Adobe updates how you make a table, Adobe updates these links. So when we look at what I'm going to call supplemental resources inside our course, they're all adobe.com links because if I share them with you and Adobe changes, I know those links will automatically update because Adobe's amazing. So what I recommend is use Adobe to for supplemental instruction, not books. But if you really wanted to buy a book, I really do like those classroom and not classroom, those visual quick start guides. Okay. Um, Calculating your grade. So your course grade is based on the unit. So all of the modules inside unit one are worth a combined 25% of your grade. So if you look at all the point values, and if there's 300 points, if you get 50% of those 300 points, you would get 12.5% of, of your grade, if that makes sense, because you're getting 50% of the value of the unit. The unit's worth 25%, so you would get 12.5. Um, a better way to look at this is if you do unit one, two, and three, and you have 100% at the end of unit three, and then you choose not to do unit four, even though you had 100% up until the end of unit three, you the highest grade you could earn in the class would then be an 85, because unit four is worth 15% of your grade. If you get a zero in unit four, you lose 15% right off the top of your grade. Same applies to any other unit. So if you didn't do unit one and you just started with unit two, the highest grade you could earn in the class would be a 75 because you wouldn't have any points for unit one. The grading breakdown for my class is a little bit standard, a little bit different. If you've taken other classes for me, it's the same um, grading breakdown that I use for all classes. Uh, you can see that you need a 93% or higher. My classes are skills-based. I allow you to fix and resubmit. There is no reason that everyone in this class cannot earn 100%. Um, that, uh, that being said, I will use A's and A minuses and B pluses to differentiate all of those excellent grades. Um, I'd say excellent, really, really excellent and, and beyond excellent grades. If you look closely, you'll see I don't give a B minus, a C minus, a D minus or anything like that. Um, I don't like to give minus grades. I think, well, I think it's a negative viewpoint, but also mostly because in order to, to meet a prerequisite, you in general, It'll, the term will be you need a C grade or better. I have had quite a few students that have come back and said, oh, I thought I met the prereq for this class or that class, but I had a C minus because they weren't, they weren't understanding that a C or better is not any C or better. It is literally a C or a C plus. So I just don't give minus grades. So you'll see that um, if you get anywhere between a 70 and a 76 is a C. If you get a 76 or higher, it's a C plus, et cetera. Okay. I'm going to skip over the objectives for now. Um, if you need accommodations through the DRC, um, and I, I have not received any accommodations so far, and it's May 9th, our class starts next Monday, um, make sure that you get those accommodations through the DRC. If you need double time on your exams, if you need um, a screen reader or something like that, um, contact them ASAP. They are amazing. They do amazing work over there. If you don't know what an accommodation is, if you think you might need an accommodation, if you have questions about accommodations, it couldn't hurt to contact them. Contact them and ask them um, what, what resource is available. I want every single student to be um, successful in this course. To me, success means getting 100%, right? But I want you to, to be as successful as you want or need to be. And I think there's no reason that anyone, I know there's no reason that every single one of the students in this class can't earn an A. 
Um, and I don't want you to not earn an A because you needed double time on your exams and you didn't go through the DRC or something like that. Okay, at the bottom of the syllabus is a little snapshot of our game plan for the semester, but I'd prefer you use the home page. So now I want to backtrack to the course description, the course outcomes, and the course objectives. And this is sometimes confusing. So the course description for our course is, in Art 1200 InDesign software, students learn the skills, tools, and procedures needed to create electronic page layout files for output using leading industry software. That is really basic and it doesn't say anything. So then you can take a look at the course outcomes and you can see, okay, well this kind of expands on that a little bit. These are the broad arching goals of the course and they're still quite generic and I'm not going to read them all, you can read them, but one is apply basic graphic arts concepts like color modes, image types, file formats, printing and color separations. That's kind of a generic term. <coughs> what I would like you to know is that if you scroll down and you find the section of the syllabus that talks about module and lesson level learning objectives, this is where the meat and potatoes of our course is. This is what we're actually going to do. By completing the, the smaller, more detailed micro objectives, after we complete all of these objectives throughout the semester, we will have achieved those overall outcomes for the course. And by achieving the outcomes of the course, we will have aligned that to the course description. And so if you're only going to read one of those three sections, skip down to objectives. And this really maps out every single thing we will do this semester. In unit three, we have lesson 14, styles and design efficiency. During that specific lesson, we will use object, paragraph, and character styles to repeat design choices throughout a layout. We will explain how and why styles are used to provide design efficiency and consistency. We will explain the difference between a paragraph style and a character style. These are the actual actionable things that we will do this semester. So if you're having trouble understanding what we're going to do, come down to the objectives. And these, these are the things that we're going to do. And after doing them, we can scroll back up to the course outcomes and we can say, okay, yeah, I can see how all of those things that we did this semester make it so we have achieved these broad goals. We have, yes, we have applied design efficiency, like literally what I was just talking about for that lesson, right? We have applied design efficiency through the use of automation of page layout processes by using pa parent pages, page numbering, type formatting, like paragraph and character styles, etc. Okay, please make sure you read through the syllabus thoroughly, but I've highlighted kind of the key things. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about with you today is, well, there's two things. I want to talk to you about what any generic module throughout the semester looks like, and then I want to click through the orientation with you. So let's grab any one module. It doesn't matter which module. Um, I'm going to do, let's say, creating and modifying vector art. When you click on it, it will redirect to the modules tab, and it will kind of show you a snapshot of what the module looks like. Every module is set up in basically the same way. So some, let's go from start to finish. So every module starts with an overview that says, hey, this is what we're going to do. These are the goals for the module. And then there will be a lesson. Sometimes there's two lessons. Sometimes there's three lessons. Sometimes there's one lesson. But there will be at least one lesson. The lesson has is what we're going to call this a learning resources page. That page has your lecture. It has the goals of the lecture, it has supplemental links to adobe.com, it has everything you would need for all your learning based content for the lesson. After you complete the lesson, each lesson will have a knowledge test and or skills practice associated with it. You can see in this module, lesson eight has a knowledge test and a skills practice, but lesson nine only has a skills practice. Sometimes there will be a knowledge test, sometimes there will be a skills practice, sometimes there will be a knowledge test and a skills practice. Knowledge tests and skills practices, no matter where you find them, are designed to be knowledge building activities. They're not meant, they're not meant to make or break your grade. They're meant for you to try and experiment and to learn and to get better. So when you take your knowledge test, knowledge tests are like terms and definitions and things like that from the lesson. You get two attempts. There's no, there, uh, there's no time limit. You can open the knowledge test as you're doing the lesson. Um, what I would recommend, you get two attempts, is take the first attempt, and if you don't get all the answers correct, don't take your second attempt until you visit me during online office hours so I can help you understand why you got certain questions wrong. 
The skills practice is a hands-on InDesign activity that you will do, and then you will post in a discussion thread. Sorry, I'm getting a little comfy here. Um, you will post in a discussion thread uh, so that your classmates can see the cool things that you're creating, and you can show your teacher that you are doing the InDesign skills properly. You with me on that? Um, neither is meant to be perfect on your first attempt. That's why you get two attempts on the knowledge test. And with skills practices, you can fix and you can resubmit. After you complete all of the learning, all the lessons, the knowledge tests, and the skills practices, there's a page inside the module that literally says weekly review. Your goal is to complete everything above this in the module before your instructor's weekly review session each week. For the summer semester, it will be on Thursdays at 6 p.m. So you're responsible for giving everything above that a try before Thursday at 6 p.m. Then everything on the back end of the module, you can start before the, the live session, but you should really work on it after the live session on Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. And everything after the weekly review is meant to assess your learning and understanding. So everything before it, you're building your knowledge and everything after you're showcasing your knowledge. So you'll have a creative project and you'll have a discussion. The creative projects are hands-on um, InDesign projects where you'll create something and you'll submit it. And then your discussion is a way for you to communicate why what you're doing is important or of value, how it connects to industry or professionalism or your future career. Um, there's different questions that you'll answer and you'll you will contribute to a discussion about whatever the topic of the module was. And then every module will end with a module recap. <coughs> so quickly, let me just click through that so you can see what it looks like. So the overview page, you'll see, it explains what the objectives are, um, what you'll do. It has a, literally a picture. So you could look at this really quickly and say, okay, before Thursday, I have two lessons, one knowledge test, and two skills practices. I better get started right away. Then you'll have your lesson, your lesson page, this is for lesson eight, will have the objectives. These are the same objectives that were on the syllabus. It will have the embedded reading assignment for you to read through to complete the exercise or to complete the lesson. And then there will always be supplemental learning resources. These are completely optional. You should only use these if you want to take a deeper dive in a subject that we're not going deeper in, or if you're interested in hearing Someone else explained the same concept from a different point of view. After you're done the lesson, there will be a knowledge test and or skills practice. Knowledge tests are multiple choice and open-ended questions. You get two attempts. There's no time limit, so you can start it. You can see what all the questions are before you get started. And as you find the answers in the lesson, you can answer the questions. Whoops, did not. Definitely did not mean to close out of that. Hang on one second. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, after your knowledge test, there'll be a skills practice. Skills practices are all discussion threads. So what you'll do is you'll do whatever the discussion, um, the skills practice says, and then you'll post your artwork for your classmates to see. Uh, it's important that you are able to embed your artwork. So there is a video that demonstrates how to do that. And it's the same video on every single skills practice. So once you get the hang of it, you don't have to watch it again. And then um, depending on what the skills practice is, if the skills practice is very like everyone's is going to be identical, there's no example. But once we get to the creative part of the semester, there will be examples so you can see what other classmates have done in the past. So you can get an idea of what you should be submitting for the skills practice. Okay, once you do that, you continue on with the module. In this particular module, there's a second lesson. So you'll complete lesson nine, drawing with vectors. The first one was creating shapes. This is making the shapes yourself. Um, and then you'll wash, rinse, and repeat. If there is a knowledge test, you'll do it. In this case, there is no knowledge test. So you do the skills practice. This skills practice has um, a worksheet that you're going to practice making vector paths. And then once you move forward, you'll hit the page that says weekly review. This is your reminder, one, to attend the weekly review, and two, to make sure everything up to this point is completed before you get to the weekly review. So that if you have questions, um, you can ask them. When I'm talking about something, you'll actually understand what I'm talking about. Um, you don't have to have everything submitted, but you should give it a try. 
it should be your goal to have it submitted. Um, otherwise, you're going to have really chaotic Thursday, um, Friday, and Saturdays each week trying to get everything turned in by Saturday. Then everything after the weekly review session is... Um, this is how you're really being assessed on whether or not you can do the things we're learning. So there'll be a creative project. Sometimes there's no creative project, um, but most times there's a creative project. You can click on the examples, jump ahead, look at the examples first so you can see what other students have made, and then jump back and you can read the introduction and the project requirements, etc. The modules end with a discussion where you need to post in a discussion thread. It's not they're not the discussions where you have to like respond to six of your classmates in four paragraphs or less. It's it's kind of like talk a little bit about what you learn and showcase to me. And a lot of times it will say, go find a visual example of what you've learned so you can show me that you understand what you've created is applicable to the real world. And then the module will end with a module recap, which is just my way of reminding you, hey, we did do quite a few things in that module like don't forget we did learn all of these things okay <coughs> excuse me finally the last thing that i want to walk through with you is the orientation module i'm not going to read all of it because a lot of it i've ar literally already explained in this video but in order to unlock the course you need to do all of the activities in here so i'll just kind of summarize each page real quick and then when you are reading through it, you can skim through the things that I've already talked about. Every single module starts with an overview page that lists the objectives and the things you will do. Just a friendly FYI, you can click on this visual, but don't just look at it to be like, okay, I have to read all those pages and I have to submit all those assignments. I better get started. And then when you're done, you can either hit next in the bottom right hand corner, or you can click this little tracker to go to the next page. The getting started in Art 1200 page is this video. The video is literally on this page, but everything that I've talked about for getting started, for navigating the course, important information on grades and things like that is on here. It, it goes in more detail than I've gone through, but that's the goal of this page is to basically put this video into words. So if you've watched this video, you just have to skim this page. The next page is resources for help. And there's two ways that you can have resources for help. You can have college help, like advisors and generic tutoring for study skills. And then the second, probably the more important opportunity for help in this class is you can have Adobe tutoring through the visual art and design department, um, which, oh, I hit the wrong page. Okay, well, We'll, we'll, we'll get to help in a second. Sorry about that. Okay, this page is about taking an online course. Um, I put this in every single one of my online courses, and I'm just going to be really blunt. Some some students are, are more apt to be successful in online, and some are more apt to be successful on campus. And neither is right or wrong. It's just what you need for your learning style. Um, Online students need to be thorough, they need to be proactive, they need to ask questions, they need to be organized, they need to log into the course multiple times per week. Um, if you're somebody that wants to show up to a class and be told what to do for two and a half hours at a time, and then do that again on Thursday, and not have to do any homework, this is not the class for you. But we do have on-campus sections where you get to come to class five hours per week and basically do all of your coursework and your homework during class. Um, really read through this page if you're kind of on the fence about whether or not an online class is right for you. I will not be offended if you decide that this class isn't for you. Um, however, in the summer, we only offer two online sections of InDesign. There is no on-campus. So if you want to take an on-campus or even a flipped classroom hybrid where you come to class and do online work in a hybrid format, um, you'll have to wait till the fall semester for that. Okay. Next page is all about um, technology requirements for this course. So you don't have to be a computer was to take this course, but you have to have some basic understanding of computers. You don't have to have ever used Adobe or downloaded Adobe, but you need to have your own computer. You need to be able to download software, open files, save files, close files without instructions. If I tell you to open a file um, and you need me to step-by-step step tell you how to open a file, 
you should not take this class yet. You should take a computer literacy course first. Other than that, you need to have a computer that can download and install InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator, and you need to be able to use either Google Drive or any other file sharing website, which will allow you to upload your artwork and then share it with other people. Dropbox.com, um, Microsoft Office 365 has an option. My demo videos are all for Google because I think it is the best and easiest option in the long run. We no longer have uh, Google accounts through the college, but you can create your own one for free. It's not a requirement though. If you don't want to use Google, you can use Office 365 through the college or Dropbox or any other site. But if you use any other file storage site except for Google Drive, you have to be responsible for understanding how to get your artwork onto that site and to download it and link it and embed it the way that we will through Google Drive. Okay, now the resources for help, which I was talking about earlier. So there's two ways you can get resources for help. The college offers specific resources, but this first tab here for visual art and design explains that we have computer labs that you can work in on campus if you don't have access at home, but also um, we have Adobe tutoring. But the hours change, and in the summer it could change from week to week. So you need to call the department office to ask what the computer lab hours are and the Adobe tutoring hours. And the phone number to call is 801-957-3042. You click here, it's information about Adobe. Um, but that's the department office number. If anybody has the office, the, the, the open computer lab and the tutoring hour, uh, hours list, it will be the department office. Okay. Um, there are two pages in here about SLCC pathways. R1200 is meant to be taken as a first semester course, so it's important that if you're undecided, you do read through these. Essentially, um, you're no longer, if you're a new student, you're no longer allowed to be completely undecided. You have to choose one of, I think it's eight areas of study. This course is in the arts, communication, and digital media area of study. It includes architecture, interior design, fashion, communication, visual arts. Um, it's like the, it's basically the school but they're not calling it a school anymore. And the goal of SLCC Pathways is if you say that you are interested in a program in the arts, communication, and digital media area study, all the courses inside that area are gonna give you more information to help you ultimately choose a program. So this page, if you are an undecided student, talks all about what SLCC Pathways is and what you should do to be successful as an arts, communication, and digital media area of study undecided student. The next page talks specifically about visual art and design. So within the umbrella of our area of study of the arts, communication, and digital media, you might be interested in architecture and interior design, communication, the Fashion Institute, performing arts, or visual art and design. Those are big chunked areas. This specific course, Art 1200, is in the visual art and design department. So I've included a page all about visual art and design programs because if you're taking this course, you may be interested in visual art and design. If you scroll down, there's an FAQ and you can expand these and you can read all about anything that you want to learn about. So maybe, maybe you're a student who wants to do visual art and design and you know that you want to transfer to a four-year college and complete a bachelor's degree. What are my transfer options? AS degrees or transfer degrees, AAS degrees or workforce degrees. So you could expand this tab and you could learn more about our transfer options. And right now, the only two options we have are you can do the animation associate of science degree, and then you can read here about what articulations they have, or you can do the graphic communications AS degree, and then you can read about their articulations. And because I am the graphic communications professor, I will let you know, we have a two plus two transfer articulation. If you complete the graphic communications AS degree, and you want to enter the Graphic Design BFA at the University of Utah, you can click on this link and you can follow the requirements of this articulation agreement. And when you go up to the University of Utah, if you're, if you're accepted into the university, you will automatically be granted admission into the Graphic Design BFA program. They will wipe away the first two years and you will start as a junior. So that's just one little thing that's in here. There's tons of information. You can learn about program faculty and, and different things and, you know, lots of different things in here. 
And I don't know why my little ticker went away. Okay, that's the last thing that you have to read for the orientation. Everything else, these are things you're gonna submit. So the first one is downloading and installing Adobe CC and InDesign. It's set up as a quiz because after you follow the instructions, I want you to take the quiz and there's only two questions. The first is, were you able to do it? And you will say, yes, I have installed Adobe CC and InDesign CC. And the second question is, do you have any questions? So if you're having trouble installing or you have questions, post them here and I will answer them during the first week of the semester. The next activity is your syllabus slash orientation quiz. This is the one that I gave you the questions to via the announcements. So you'll take that quiz. You should have all of the answers since you wrote down or printed that announcement. The next activity is called introduce yourself to the class. This is the way for you to practice using discussion threads to embed artwork through Google Drive or another file sharing website. The goal is to practice it now so that when you have to do it for your first skills practice, you don't have to figure it out. You've already figured it out during the orientation. The next assignment is called the initial response assignment. It's what I like to include in my class, which basically is an open-ended text frame that you can submit directly to me. No one else is going to see it. And you can either say, yes, I'm confident with the course. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to be successful in the first module. Or you can say, no, I'm confused. I'm lost. I have questions. But you have to ask questions. You can't just say, I'm lost. You have to say, I'm lost. I have these specific questions. Um, and so you'll submit that. The last submission is your profile picture. You don't actually submit it. You're just going to go up to the top left hand corner and go into your profile and update, upload a profile picture. The assignment is worth basically no points at all. It's not going to affect your grade if you don't submit it. But um, you will only get credit for it if you have a profile picture that looks like you, that's professional, that's zoomed in so I can see your face. The reason that I want you to have a profile picture is because I want to see what you look like so I can start to put a name to a face, to put projects to a face, cartoon versions of you, group shots of you and five other people, or you and two other people, uh, pictures of you on the top of a mountain from 400 miles away. Uh, they don't help me see your face. So I just want your face zoomed in in the circle, and then you will get the points for the assignment. And then every module ends with a recap. So you'll click on the recap and you'll go, yeah, I did do, yep, mm -hmm, I did do those things. And then um, you'll be finished with the orientation. So that wraps up everything that we will do during the first um, orientation module. Because we have 12 modules in 12 weeks, you have to complete the orientation plus module one all in the first week. I recommend that you shoot to get the orientation due uh, done by Tuesday, honestly, by Tuesday. Um, and then you have Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday to get the first half of the getting started in InDesign module done before Thursday when I host my um, weekly review via the Zoom tab. And then you'll have Friday and Saturday to finish the module by its due date on Saturday the 21st. Okay, if you have any questions about getting started, you can leave them in the initial response activity in the orientation module, or you can hop into the chat and leave me a message. I will check that every day during the first, um, well, probably every day throughout the entire semester, but I'll check it multiple times per day during the first week of the semester so that if you leave a message, I'm getting back to you as soon as possible. Uh, I am recording this video on Monday, May 9th. I am going to be off the grid for the rest of the week so you can get started, but our class doesn't officially begin until Monday the 16th. If you get started early and you have questions, just note that I will answer them when I get back to my computer on Monday.